Uh, friends, hi. Um, so I'm going to be discussing uh, the the point in uh, uh, risk management and, and stochastic processes about uh, the difference between time um, expectation and uh, space expectation. And we have, we'll call non-ergodicity when you have a divorce between the two values. So let me start with the argument in um, uh, Peters and Gelman, uh, the, the great paper that figured out that for about 200 and some uh, years, uh, most people conflated one time average for space average, for ensemble average. In other words, what happens under uh, multiplicity of worlds. So the non-ergodicity uh, that they uncovered is quite trivial mathematically, but you would be surprised uh, of massive consequence. So let's very simply take here a, a stochastic process that has uh, independent increment and is arithmetic. So you start at S0 equals 0. Let me make it uh, 0. And you generate a table and look every time where it goes after a thousand steps. So it will... <coughs> never settle down, as you noticed. In other words, the expectation to be at zero, which is a sum, is not going to be realized along one single um, sample path. It will be, uh, of course, if you average all these sample paths, you will get that. But look, it's very interesting. First of all, this comes from a very simple property, which is a Mart Mart martingale property, that at any point in time here, the expectation is the last price. So if you're at 20, the expectation is 20. So you've had an excursion away from 0 to 20, and then for the next billion years, <laughs> your expectation is to stay at 20. And if you make it to 40, in a trillion years, the most likely <coughs> actually is going to be uh, 40. So, the, so therefore, you see it will drift. So it is not ergodic in the sense that time averages should give you a 0. Uh, by the working of the law of large numbers, simply because the law of large numbers doesn't work in time, it works in space. Uh, however, however, you can transform it into something ergodic, the returns. Your returns will be ergodic. If you just take the return, they will be ergodic because, of course, they will not drift. So this is a very <laughs> weird property. It's very obvious when you, when you uh, look at it. And it was missed. So that's the ergo non ergodicity of Murray Gelman. It becomes ergodic, actually, because if I take all these averages, you see the sample path, sa another sample path. If I take the terminal value, say at 1000 or value at any what we call slice distribution, it will be there. Now, strong non ergodicity, when I look at the bottom uh, graph, okay, I introduce a, an absorbing barrier. In other words, the minute you hit a certain price, say here 80, you go to zero. Thanks. Bye. That's it. You, you go to jail and stay there. Okay, like a monopoly. Some paths or a thousand have not been absorbed. It's called an absorbent being barrier. The minute you hit a certain value, you will be absorbed. You will hit that value. Now, in two-dimensional space, in 2D, um, you eventually will be absorbed. There is a theorem, Kakutani, which ironically... <laughs> comes from the father of the, not Michiko Kakutani of the New York Times, and which tells you that a drunk um, uh, person, man, will eventually find his way home because you will revisit at infinity every single point on a real line, but a drunk bird may be lost forever because the, that, uh, rec that uh, uh, recurrence theorem does not apply in uh, 3D or in higher dimension than uh, you know the straight uh, standard uh, random walk, uh, straightforward. So n, n of one dimension two means uh, dimension one really. So so let's take here the, the, what happens here is that eventually, if you have an absorbent barrier, your expectation. And the expectation of the ensemble of which you belong over time will be zero. On the other hand, if you take a one period and extend the number of observations to infinity, it will settle at whatever it is minus the probability of being absorbed. 
So we have that strong non-ergodicity, which I have worked on, you know, since I've been a trader, an option trader. And, and remember, this is very important. When you talk to psychologists, they say, well, you know, you're focusing too much on survival. You don't get it. Every single trader I know would say, take all the risk you want. There are plenty of risks you can take in life. Make sure you show up tomorrow. In other words, make sure you're never absorbed. And if you listen to people like Warren Buffett, they say, listen, uh, I say no to a thousand things. Uh, the same thing was, was uttered by uh, the fellow from Apple, uh, Steve Jobs. Same thing. He says no all the time because if he suspects uh, absorption. But, and you can still take a lot of risks, a lot of class of risks, just by avoiding that absorption. So uh, thank you very much for listening to me. And thank you. Uh, thanks, Oli Peters, for your help, because, uh, you know, I think you're on to something very big. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.